Alright, I want to welcome everybody. This is Digger Dave Beeler going it to solo today. It's Thursday, October 21st, I think. And I'm back on the lot where Paul and I dug the last time. And we hit quite a bit of stuff. Here's Paul's hole there. And we hit a bunch of marbles and different things. And there was my hole over here. And I just probed one out here, so kind of a little short day today, so I don't know if we'll hit anything. I think this is a more of a shallower hole, so I just got a couple little tarps laid out there, and we'll get down in there and see if we hit anything. So, all right, well, come along on the little adventure. It may not be much today, so I just thought I'd show, show it, and if it ain't no good, I'll probably just edit this out anyway. <laughs> so, all right, well, come along. Welcome. Just getting started here and hit the first bottle sticking out down in here. It's probably less than a foot in the ground and can you tell what that is <laughs> from the top? That's actually a pretty easily identifiable bottle if you've dug a lot of them, or at least I think it is. But uh, it's a little hand blown, hand tooled double ring collar, long neck medicine bottle. Well, I wait. Let's see what it is. I, I'm thinking it's a Fletcher's or a Pitcher's Castoria. So, anyway, I'll dig that out. <laughs> Come right back. Okay, our first little find is about ready to come out. I worked around a little bit here. So, and as most of you could probably guess, it's. I think it's certainly a Castoria. Yep, there's a hand blown one though. Castoria. And it's a Charles H. Fletcher's. That's a little later one. Although it is hand blown, so that's good. It's probably 1910 era. So, yeah, well, Paul hit several of them in his hole. Hit one more little bottle right down in here sticking out. Looks like a slick. No, it actually is embossed. All right. Uh, J.I. Brown and Sons, Boston. That was a uh, some kind of probably a tooth powder bottle. Brown's Bronchial Troches or something. I can remember having one of them with a label one time. That looks pretty old though. It's definitely 1890s or early 1900. So, yeah. Well, that's just a start. I'm only down in there a little over a foot. I think this hole only goes down about five feet, so it's good because I only got about an hour and something to dig here, so. Yeah, I gotta go pick up Shelly. She's at work, so. All right, just thought I'd bring you along here on a little short adventure today. Okay, just hit the bottom down there. It's a little less than five foot deep. You can see that yellow down there. That's the hard packed uh, yellow clay, undisturbed soil run a probe in it nothing down there so anyway there's no sign of seeds or trash anywhere in that bottom it's all ashes so this is what we refer to as an ash pit you can see it was filled with this just wood ashes here from their stoves and uh, white and gray burn you know wood ash only other piece I hit was a uh, unfortunately it was pretty old a Shiloh's consumption cure Get one of these intact over in the other hole here a few feet away, 1880s stuff. So, could be 1880s. That browns can go back easily into the 80s. That castoria was right up pretty high. So, anyway, it looks like it might have been an 1880s trash pit. So, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, scrunch around in there a little bit. But I'm not going to spend much time on it because I don't have much time. So, I'm going to hurry up and see if I can get another hole real fast. So, all right. Just wanted to catch you up on that. So... If I hit anything, I'll come back. Okay, filled that one in. It was a little ash pit, about five foot deep. Nothing in it, just what I showed you there. Just dug for about another 20 minutes, never hit another bottle. But uh, anyway, I moved over and got another little hole going here. This is down about three foot deep and hitting a bunch of bricks, but it does have a couple hand blown bottles broken, but at least it looks like it's 1890s there, a big bowl. And... All right, well, Anyway, catch up. That came off the top, machine made. But it's pretty old. It's like 1918, 1920. 
So, all right, well, it feels like there's a few things down there, so I'm gonna go down. If I got time, I'm kinda in a press for time here, so I gotta hurry, but. All right, well, anyway, we'll get down in there and I'll, I'll show you if we hit anything. All right, well, I'm hitting a few things there, but I'm out of time. I gotta go pick Shelly up, so I'm gonna have to fill this one in and unfortunately come back another time. <laughs> A lot of trash in there, but yeah, it's about turn of the century. So anyhow, I got to fill it in and get going. Well, good morning, y'all. It's Digger Dave coming to you from the south. Uh, it's one of my favorite places to dig in the country is uh, deep in the south. I love digging in Mississippi and Louisiana and Alabama. But anyway, uh, don't get down as often as I'd like. But today I'm just by myself. Shelly had to work, couldn't come with me. Of course, Paul's got the kids, he couldn't come either. But I'm just have a couple days here where I'm gonna try to uh, dig some bottles. It's, uh, it's in the end of October, and I'll bring you along with me on this adventure. Whether it's good or bad, I don't know, but anyway, I uh, dug a couple holes back home. Uh, this past week and uh, I didn't get video of them, but I might show a few of the things I found But anyway, it's a pretty day today. I'll kind of give you an idea here. What's going on? This is a very trashed up lot. Uh, I talked to the guy that uh, Was out here. He was real nice and gave me permission to dig here. So anyway, I come back. I'm back here in the corner and uh, probe one out already don't know if it's a privy or just a little trash pit. A lot of times in the south there's trash pits and man they use these privies a lot of times all the way up into the 1940s and 50s so you could hit awful new stuff here as some of you guys that dig in the south know so but hey let's get down in here we'll see thank you for coming along and for those of you that are not familiar uh, usually what I look for is the old outhouse privy pits where they would have had a little shed sitting on top of this back hopefully over a hundred years ago and they dug a little hole in the ground usually uh, in the south you know three foot to five or six foot sometimes deeper but anyhow let's let's see if they threw anything old away here all right dug a little test hole there and about the only thing that's very impressive about it is the mosquitoes. <laughs> these, these southern mosquitoes are every bit the annoyance of their northern cousins. But anyway, you can see down in there, it's only down about three feet or so, and it's not very much deeper to the bottom. I don't feel much there. It's got a lot of oysters in it. Uh, it's not as old as what I'm looking for, so I'm not going to spend much time on it. Yeah, there's a vinegar bottle and a like some kind of a panel medicine. The only whole bottle I got was a little machine-made ink bottle. That's slick. There's a couple pieces of decorated ironstone, a goblet, some kind of a pattern bowl. I see a lot of oysters in there, but that's common all over the south. You get down close to the Gulf Coast, you hit a lot of oysters. And uh, interestingly enough, up north there, uh, those fade in popularity around 1860s you know we dig pondle holes 1840s through early 60s and we hit a lot of oysters that brought up from the gulf coast but uh, then they kind of go away faded from popularity but down here they never did everybody ate oysters and <clears throat> hit a lot of champagne wine bottles along with them but this hole's a little bit too late it's about 1920 and uh, i'm not going to finish it so Anyhow, I'm going to move on and see if I can hit another one. Maybe nearby there will be a little older one. So let's see what we can get. All right. <clears throat> Hole number one filled in. Moved up. Probed out another one here. And it don't feel great. But anyhow, let's see what the first bottle is down here. It don't look too enthusing, but... We're going to pull it out together just so you can see what it might be. And it is a, well, it's actually hand-blown, so, oh, it's embossed. I can't believe it. 
we're so used to hitting these up north that have nothing on them so it's kind of a nice thing when you hit one that's actually embossed hey and it's actually a fairly scarce one bon ami jay grossman sons new orleans hey all right well, i've hit some jay grossman bottles i don't ever remember hitting one of them intact i think i dug a broken one but yeah it's a nice little amber pint kind of a odd shape with a long neck and it's hand blown with applied yeah well, you know hand tooled collar yeah so that's a good start down there that's first bottle out of there <laughs> thought it was going to be a slick but at least it's uh it's a good keeper starts the day out so all right bon ami that used to be a cleansing powder wasn't it i don't even sound very good <laughs> i don't know what that means maybe it's french for something so all right well let's get down in there and see what else we can get here okay about 10 minutes later they're chopping some roots and digging out a, some oyster shells here get a piece of wood piece of old board it was like a knot that's kind of cool and it almost looks like a sword or a, or a gun or something doesn't it but anyway that was down in there they threw that away but all right bottle number two and it looks like a slick whiskey but hey that's what i thought about the last one so we're gonna treat them all like they could be something here oh, i think my my first instinct was correct on this one it is a slick it's a little half pint but it's a pre-prohibition whiskey bottle so we'll toss that back there and see if there's anything else there i don't think there is but fruits Roots and uh, a lot of oysters, as you can see. <laughs> Not an oyster pit, though. Boy, I tell you what, when you get an oyster pit, you will know it. It's like all there is is oysters and stuff. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to have to dig out some of them oysters and, and we'll see what's down in there. I'm going to do some probing around here, too, but it's pretty thick. There's a big tree there and brush so I don't know how much farther I can go but we'll see well there you have it <laughs> a genuine Gulf Coast oyster pit it's probably a little over 100 years old the only two bottles that was in it was the two little whiskey flasks that they threw in the top when they filled it in about 1915 or so 1912 but anyhow it's just full of oysters you can see piles of them there and I'll dig around the walls. Maybe you'll get lucky and have another bottle or two up when they filled it in. But there's nothing in the bottom. Found a horseshoe. A couple pieces of iron stone here. There's some big oyster shells. <laughs> Usually those are older, the bigger ones. But anyway, that's, that's about that. I'm going to go ahead and fish around a little bit and then I'm gonna fill this one in see if there's anything else around here Whew. all right it's getting hot and humid <laughs> so hole number three no good results in this one either so anyway that's it it is a little bitty thing probably less than three foot deep to the bottom and uh, thankfully I'm not digging great big holes here so it's not taking me a whole long time to figure them out but yeah I think the mosquitoes definitely uh, they will equal our northern mosquitoes I suppose wherever you're at and there's swampy water areas you're gonna have a lot of skeeters but <sighs> well I about developed the resistance to them over the years this is the only thing that was in here it was just a little broken paneled medicine a couple oyster shells that's it great big lamp chimney great big thing yeah, a couple other little small pieces of glass like a stem off a lamp or a pedal compote or something but anyway that's that all right well i can see why these guys down south here they like walking creeks uh, for two reasons i think there's more bottles in them and you don't have to work as hard and also, it's a lot cooler <laughs> right there with the water. And, uh, yeah, that might be sounding like a good ideal, but, man, I don't know. I'm not going to give up on the privies yet. 
little trash pits here or whatever these are I don't even think they're privies but uh, all right well gotta keep it going man persistence usually pays off I got one one bottle one keeper three holes so that's not a very good ratio is it <laughs> I'm ready to go back north already so, all right mosquitoes here you can have your fun now and hole number four it's just it's just a little bitty <clears throat> shallow trash pit it looks like but anyway there's a piece of pressed glass look like an old some kind of a pot coffee pot or something I'm gonna dig around that see if there's anything in there this was broken but it was an old hand-blown ketchup bottle Not real old but probably early 1900s but uh, anyway working on a little bottle right there you can see looks like a little maybe a medicine or a druggist or something our right, these are almost always unembossed but in the south you could hit some well this actually is embossed hey hey all right second keeper of the day i'm not going to be able to read it my eyes are fogged up i don't even wear glasses jones brothers only the best Gulfport, Mississippi. All right, there we go. <laughs> Gulfport, Mississippi drugstore bottle, Jones Brothers. We'll take that. Yeah. Okay. Can't say I ever dug one of them. I've dug a couple other Gulfport drugstore bottles before, but I don't remember that one. So, all right. Well, get down in there and see if there's anything else. Let me just scratch around here. Oh, there was a. Well, I thought it was broken. It's whole, actually. It's a little salt shaker. Yeah. Looks like a little hand-blown salt shaker. Still got the old tin top on it. Yeah. Well, that's, that's it right there. See that? Undisturbed sand. You know you're on bottom. Boy, oh boy. This but gets interesting. It fizzles out on me. Oh, well. There's anything else in there or not? Well, some crunchy stuff. But... All right. Well, I don't see any other bottles, so oh, there. Just as I was speaking, that there's something there. A little one. Oh, it's got the threaded collar, so it's not real. Old. It's a little. It looks like a little mustard bottle. That's early 1900s. 1910 something like that well that's anyway I tripled my output there <laughs> so at least got three bottles out of here so yeah I might be another one or two down in there I'm gonna dig around a little bit and see and another little bottle in the hole there oh, it looks like a little amber beer or something Bring it out and see. Oh, it's a crown top. Doesn't look like there's anything on it. Nope. It's a slick. It's machine made too, so. Ah, double bad. <laughs> Not good. A couple other little things just pulled out. Just about done here. A couple little trivia things. What in the world is that? Looks like copper. Then up. What that is I do know what that is do you know what that is it's flat on the bottom almost boat shape See that? real heavy made of iron and you know what that is stoneware bottle white very common throughout the south <laughs> and you know what that thing is it's like a blade okay and we'll talk about them maybe in the cleanup i gotta find something to do here <laughs> so anyway i'll dig around a little bit more there see if we got anything else well back when i was a boy we dug oysters and mined them out of the water make a boomerang out of them things man Look at that thing. <laughs>
That is one big oyster shell. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to keep that one in relation to a beer bottle. Look at that. <laughs> so that is an oyster shell now. Whoo! It's the only one I like it in there anyway. Hand blown beer bottle A B. And another drugstore bottle before I finished it out. Jones Brothers. So it's the same as the other one. Don't say where it's from, but that's a Gulfport bottle, Jones Brothers. So alright, well, <laughs> so yeah, I couldn't resist. That is a that is a big honking oyster, man. Look at that thing. That is big, so yep. And down on the Gulf Coast, man. Back in the day, they used to find the big ones. All right, I'm going to fill this one in and see if I can find another one. All right, well, as you can probably tell by the sound of the sirens in the background, I'm no longer in Kansas. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm in New Orleans now and uh, had to take a break yesterday and I ended up not getting back to the digging there. But uh, anyway, I got a motel and came on into New Orleans and boy, there's a lot of damage here from that hurricane that hit through here. But uh, anyway, I'm going to try to do a little bit of digging here today, see if I can get going. So I got a little trash pit here. And I got two bottles exposed. You can see there's a little amber one here. Let's see what it is. Looks like a little amber slick, more than likely. Yeah, oh well. Nice little hand-blown bottle though. Probably 1890s. Yep, hand-blown. All right. First little find of the day. There's another, oh, that popped right out of there. All right. Hey, it's embossed. Cool. All right. Not sure what it is. That's yeah, written in script. I can't make it out. Blooming hard or something. N O New Orleans. <clears throat> so, all right. Nice little kind of flared ring collar, about 1890s. So, yeah. All right. I think that was all I saw. Just some two bottles there, but some more. Ironstone here starting to come out. It's not a very deep pit, so hopefully there'll be a few little bottles in it. Oh, there's a little amber sab jar. Got that ground lip on it, ground sheared lip. No, no embossing on it, but hand blown. So yeah, a little medical sab or ointment jar. So. All right, well I'm gonna go ahead and clear a little bit of this out of here. And then uh, we'll come back whenever I see something. Okay, not five minutes after I just turned the camera off. Got a couple more bottles exposed right on the bottom. And one looks like a green, like a wine bottle here. And that one looks like a uh, black glass case of gin bottle. Little case of gin. So, all right, let's, let's work around these a little bit. See if we can get them out. And I apologize if the camera gets shaky a little bit here. I'm just holding it with my hand. I haven't been able to, oops, see that's broken, the wine bottle. Okay, let's pop that out of there. Get that thing out. Yep, that was an old, old wine bottle. It would have had a deep kick up, probably 1880s. All right, well this one's more interesting anyway than a case of gin, so let's see if we can get it out of there. This iron still in there. Well, it's a hot day already. It's like in the... It's gonna be 90 degrees, I'm afraid. I was hoping that was just a plain old square, but I believe it is a case of gin. There's a lot of Dolphal Wolf's aromatic schnapps bottles here in New Orleans. It's getting tough, I tell you what. If you think you just come into town and dig bottles, think again, because it's it's pretty tough here. To get something going. You gotta really know the town, know people. You know, I have a real advantage. I know a lot of the neighborhoods and people know me. Ugh. Oh, there, no, I thought that was another bottle. Oh, what crows are loud, aren't they? Making a lot of noise. Oh, you know what? I think I feel embossing on that. Hey, hey. All right, that's exciting. Let's 
the case of gins around in boss. So nice when you get one that's embossed. Hope it's whole. It's excitement of digging, you just never know. Oh, it's wanting to come out. My hand digger's bending a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I think I can kind of wiggle it out of there now. Carefully. No, I hope it's not got a hole on the back side or something. Carefully wiggling it. All right, there it is. And it is embossed. A nice one. A C A Nole. Shade them. All right. <laughs> hey, that's a good find. Looks like it's good. Got old black Louisiana mud. It ain't cracked or something. It looks like it's gonna be good. All right. Well, that's a good, a good find. ACA Noe Sheetum, and it's a dark green. Yeah, you won't be able to see it. Now, it's black though. It's not pondled, but it is pretty old. It's probably 1880s, maybe even 70s. But it got a nice crude applied lip on it, so. All right, that's a good start. Well, I got that drugstore bottle and that, so yay. <laughs> All right, well, let me just poke around just a little bit, see if there's anything else nearby. Just turn the camera off from them other. They were just right here. A piece of bone. All right, well, you know these little trash pits, they can be, they can be good and they can just be nothing, you know. That might be the only bottles come out of this thing, but. Hoping not, so there's more. What's that there? I heard a nice, nice good sounding clink. Solid. Oop, and it is glass. And I think I already know what it is. Can you tell? It's, it's gonna be teal. It's gonna have eight sides on it. Hmm? No, it's not a soda. Come on, guys. I wish it was. Pondled panel soda. <laughs> No, lower it, lower it just a little bit, medicine-wise. Mm -hmm. I think it's a Rumford. Rumford Chemical Works. Which would be all right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Rumford Chemical Works. Yeah, a nice little cathedral panel there. That's a real pretty teal color, if you can see. Yeah. All right, that's another nice 1880s or 90s bottle. Ah, so yeah, this is a nice, probably 1890 pit, 1980s. All right, well, there's a couple goodies right there. Just let's see if there's anything else. <laughs> Before we turn the camera off. Nice little pocket that was there. Wasn't is that another one back in there? It is. Something else back in there. Let me move a little bit of stuff here. I don't know what it is. I can't see it. The sun's kind of glaring on me here. Oh, it's glass. I don't know what it is yet. It's kind of got a long neck, like a... Like a... No, it's a food bottle. I believe there's a piece of slate. Yeah, it looks like more like a... Worcestershire sauce. Worcester, Worcestershire. Man, I can't pronounce. I always said Worcestershire, and I was corrected. And it's Worcestershire. So folks that's got better way of speaking can probably pronounce it better than me. But that's what it looks like anyway. Here it comes. Let's see. I got to dig cockleburrs off of me here. I was hoping that's all it was. Went in some. Hey, look at that. I still got the stopper. All right. Looks like a Lee and Perrins. Yeah, Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. Did I say it right? I don't know why I'm worried about it. Does it really matter? <laughs> of course not. Stopper, Lee and Perrin's. Just think, nobody's opened that up for 130 years. Isn't that neat? I just, I don't know, man. I just love it. Never get tired of this. 61 years old now. Been doing it since I was a little boy. and Something's never gotten tired, man. I just love this. Look at that. Man, three bottles just right like that. I gotta enjoy it, see, because that might be it. <laughs> Many times it is. Mosquitoes are bad here, but they ain't as bad as they were in Mississippi or Illinois, as that goes. 
All right, can we get one more? Just one more? <laughs> I don't know. All right, well, I'm sure happy about that. What that thing is. Piece of wood, it's burnt. See that, how burnt, like charcoalified. It was something though, it looks like. Could have just been a piece of wood, but yeah, it's interesting how wood it's been burnt preserves real well. See where them digging out like Egyptian, ancient Egypt stuff, man. They're finding wood that's still preserved. Okay, well, I'm gonna get in with the big heavy artillery here, my big shovel, and move some dirt out of the way and see if we hit anything else in there. So, all right, nice little pocket. Glad you were with me to enjoy it. So, wish Shelly was here or Paul, um, but Shelly was working. I think she's watching the twins. But, all right. Let's see what else there is. And back in action here. Got the hole cleaned out and got a two or three more showing down there on the bottom here. Uh, just pulled out a marble. So that was cool. That's old crocky and a broken toothbrush, bone toothbrush. Kind of a neat little stem on there. Just had the head broke off. And a nice Piso's Cure for Consumption. Piso's Cure and on the front for Consumption, Hazeltine and Company. And that's actually the oldest one of that kind. Well, not the oldest. There's a couple that's got applied lips on them, but this is the oldest style of bottle from the company. That's Aqua. Uh, later on, they came in with emerald green bottles. But uh, anyway, this is probably from 1880s. Mosquitoes. Yeah. So all right. And hit this. This is just a fluke, but you can just barely see a little bit of an iron panel on there. Look like a great big. Uh, it was an olive amber, big demijohn bottle. Yeah, they're always broken, but you can see a little bit of the iron right there in my thumbnail. That gets your juices going. All right, let's uh, let's get down here and see what we got. Test your bottle knowledge again. This one is uh, cobalt blue and round. See if you can guess what that one. Well, actually, I might be wrong. I actually thought it was a Bromel seltzer, which it may still be, but it's looking a little different now. Let's see. Oh, it is a Brahma. I gave it away. Sorry. <laughs> yep. I sold hand-blown Brahma seltzer. Early 1890s. Very cute little bird peeping over there here in the background. Little pretty bird. All right. Well, let's go on this wine bottle stuck in there. I'm going to have to get a bigger shovel and get it out. This just looks like a little... Yeah. Little shoe polish bottle. It is hand blown. Everything out of here is hand blown. There's no machine made bottles in this pit. But all right, well, slick, but I think maybe we'll keep it anyway. I think there is something right here. I don't know if it's just a piece of something. Now there's a piece of wire. There's a broken top. Let me see if I can use my right hand here, which is a little more adept digging. Yeah, it's a bottle of some kind. Be a soda. Let's see if anything on the bottom. Oh yeah. Yep, it's got a star on the bottom. That's a that's a nice New Orleans blob top soda. I think they're Ernie's. See if Ernie's had that little star on the bottom. Hope it's whole. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's awful loose. I think it might be broken. Let's see. Oh, hey, it's whole. Yeah, I was wrong. It was not an Ernie's. I apologize. City, City Bottling Company Limited. Yeah, South Liberty Street, New Orleans. All right. And a nice applied blob top on there. See, it's got that little star on it. I got mixed. There's one called C. Ernie's Bottling Works. I don't know if it's got that little monogram or not, but all right. Well, nice good soda there. And we got one more out here this I didn't even see that one, so let me see if there's anything else there. Let me dig a little bit here. There's some iron stone there. Big piece of iron stone china. Yeah, I'll come back later and get that one. All right, let's see about this one. Huh? That bit might be yours. Uh-oh, something. It's broken, whatever that is right there. It might be a lid. I may have to get my bigger shovel with this because it looks like it's going to be a little taller wine bottle. I dig around it. 
yeah, it's just some broken tumbler or something there. Yeah, it's got the horseshoe on it though, see that? Horseshoe and star, a little drinking glass tumbler. And they sold it to for tobacco or, you know, snuff or something like that in there. All right, let me see if I can get that out of there. All right, here it's coming. Oh, that's a big one. Whew, look at that thing. All right, about a foot tall. This old olive green wine bottle. Hey, no seal or name on it, but yeah, it's a keeper. Nice big deep, uh-oh. Yeah, it's got a big deep kick up. It's like it's broken, gone out of it. Ah, it cheated me on that one. I thought I heard something rattling around in there. Yeah, the bottom's broke out of it, but somebody might still want it. Make a candle holder or something out of it, I suppose. All right, and I did see another bottle around over here. It's like a, what was that? Oh, I think that was an ink bottle. It's all smashed up though. It sure was. It was a Carter's Inks. Carter's Ink, yeah. Boy, could a bottle be more cracked? Look at that. Wow. <laughs> that probably was in the heat. See, it had a stopper and they had to heat it up and cool it down to get the stopper out and it cracked and broke the neck of the bottle. What a shame. Well, let's keep it going. Got bottles to dig here. Kind of a nice trashy stuff down at the bottom of this. It's not very deep. But it sure is fun because there's little things you have to watch for. There was a little child's uh, chamber pot for a doll doll set. Chamber pot with a handle on it. Alright. Sorry, I got a little bit close here. Okay, it's, I think it's about ready to come out. It's like a slick. Oh, got the top broke on it. It was. It was just a big slick, hand-blown Amber Medicine Park Davidson Company on the bottom. All right. Well, I'm going to clean some more out, and we'll come back. Okay. About another 10, 15 minutes clearing dirt. Maybe not that much. All right. But check out this. There's a medicine bottle, something sticking out there. And it looks like another case of gin right on the bottom. And uh, let's let's dig the medicine out first. It looks like one of them French medicines, Ducrot out of Paris, probably. There's a lot of them here, in New Orleans. But I think it was a uh, must have been some really good stuff because it was for fever and ague. Yep, that's what it is. All right, Ducrot out of Paris. Elixir Alimentaire. Nice name on it, isn't it? Nice French name. All right. Outside of the French Quarter, New Orleans. Yeah. Look at that. Neat old man. 1880s. Elixir Alimentaire. Set that off here. Let's let's go after that case of gin and see if I can get it in my hand digger. Stuck down in the mud. Oh man, this is another one of them no lays. I can't believe it. <laughs> I think what's the odds of finding two embossed ones? You can see that hard mud right there in the bottom, old black. Oh, that's that's the old sticky bottom. Oh, that was two of them there. Cool. Well, that'd be nice if this one's whole too. Well, let's see. Dig carefully around it. Use your hand digger to wipe dirt away carefully. Not to get cut. All right, it's coming out. Let's see. All right, there it is. There you can still see the imprint of where it was. Look at that. <laughs> I always like that. All right. Oh, the top's broke on. I think. Oh no, it ain't. That was just a piece of mud. Let's get it over here in the shadows where you can maybe see it a little better. Wipe the mud off of it. All right. Nice one. Another little black glass case gin. ACA Nole. Shoot them, Holland. Very popular drink. Case, well, we call them case gins, a tapered square shape, but yeah, they love their gin down here in Schnapps. All right, well, there's a, there's a second one. Let's bring the other one out here so you know I'm not just reburying the first one. <laughs> so there they are, a pair of them. 
That's cool. No way, shoot him. Okay, well, I gotta clean out a little bit more and then we'll see if there's anything else in here. You know what? I think there was a glass or some tumbler. Let me dig it out. It was over here. Oh, there's something else next to it. As that happens a lot in dumps. Oh, that one's broken, whatever that is. Sometimes you're digging one thing and you hit another one and then you hit something else behind that. There's a lot of rusty stuff and rocks in here. Let's see. Oh, it was a goblet. Yeah, it was a stemware goblet. I don't know. Well, I might have had some. Yeah, I had some etched leaves going around it. It's kind of cool, isn't it? All right. Anything else? Come on, one more. One more, maybe. Oh, piece of slate there. I used to use uh, slate on the roofs. So you find a lot of slate. Oh, there's a little bottle. Medicine sticking out there or something. Just about miss that one. That's a slick, a slick slug plate on. Yeah. So a little medicine though. Yep. Alright, 1880s. Maybe another one down here. Let's see. Right on that bottom, see? A lot of bottles. It's like in privies, you know. Sometimes it's right on the bottom. Isn't it very deep? Wish it was deeper. <laughs> well, pardon me. The sun's beating down on me right now. I'm going to have to get out and take a break get it cooled off uh oh one more bottle maybe let's see if that's something or just a piece of one here i got to get my tripod i got to find a tripod my tripod broke so i've been trying to find something to make do let me see if i can get this well i'll just come back okay all right take a little break you're getting hot that's yeah, something about the humidity here in louisiana man it's just bad but anyway I'm gonna keep on going uh, I gotta go get me something to drink here right away but I got a couple more bottles to show you before we take that break just digging around a little bit I know one of these is already broken it looks like a big old jar well I don't know what it is but it's broken you can see it's got a big hole in there so let's see if we can get that one out first get it out of the way there's a bottle on either side of it I think it was a big old pickle bottle. That's what it looks like. I think it was. Yeah, it was one of them big old quart pickles. 1880s. Alright. And we got another food bottle here. It looks like a, another potential Lee and Perrins. Well, no. It gets a little bigger. It's like one of them uh, Kino La Roche type bottle. They were for fever also. We just dug that Elixir Alimentaire which was for fevers, and so was, so was this one, La Roche. It says Kina La Roche, and that was a medicine for fevers and ague, which was real common in mosquito-infested areas back in the 1800s. Had a lot of problems with different mosquito-borne diseases and uh, fevers and stuff. It's pretty prevalent, so you find a lot of fever medicine. If there's anything else right in there, right on that bottom. We just pulled out that case of gin bottle right there. Uh -oh. oh, I think it's just some iron stone on the very bottom there, yeah. Just an old iron stone chamber pot. Okay, that's the bottom there, that black stuff. Alright, we just work right along that bottom. Here someplace now I lost it, I think. Oh there it is. Oh, it's an inch and lost. Look at that. What's that one? G-O-G-U-E. Hmm, you know what that is? <laughs> Bottle guys. Dum, 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 dum. Okay, time's up. What is it? Here 
comes the other word. India! <laughs> it's an Osgood's India Chola dog. All right. Chola, you. Hope it's whole. Yeah. Looks like it's whole. Two old top ones. Not Pondal. I've dug these Pondal before. This is 1880s so though. It says Osgoods on one side. India Cholagog. And oh, this one's from Norwich, Connecticut. Okay. So that's a little later one. So it's probably 18, late 80s, maybe 1890s. So, all right. Well, hey, embossed bottles, man. I'm stoked. Stoked to the max. I had one more over here. And I don't know what the it is. It's like a clear, maybe a medicine, yeah? Looks like it's a pretty tall medicine. Uh, it might be on a moss, but you never know. Always well, gotta treat them carefully. Treat them carefully. And it is unembossed. Oh, highly unembossed. Boy, that'd have been nice, too. That'd have been a good drugstore bottle, 1880s. Mm mm mm. Get three or four slick druggists. One embossed one though, so that's all right. We'll take them. We got a lot of cool stuff here. So. Anything else? Is that a bottle? That is a little bottle. Looks like a little Bromel seltzer peeking out at us. Come on. I've always liked finding them. It's one of the first bottles I ever bought when I was a little boy back in the 1960s. I bought a Bromel seltzer bottle for 50 cent. There's an old hand blown in 1890s. Small size. Okay, anything else? Before we, before we look away, before we go get a drink and have a refreshment break here. You gotta drink a lot of fluids when it's hot and humid like this. And you're working, you get excited, and you stay down in here and hold too long. Oh, there's another bottle. There's a little ink bottle, see it? I know I'm not holding the camera very good. Boy, oh boy, anybody want to be a camera person? <laughs> all right. Yeah, a little clear cone ink bottle, all right. That'll turn amethyst. Yeah, oh, Paul will be wanting to arm wrestle me for that one. Okay, one more, one more. Mm. I guess it'll still be back. See what happens though? When you're hot, and you get down in here and you're digging stuff and you don't want to leave. And, hey man, it's fun. It's hard to pull out of this kind of good holes they don't happen very often you gotta save them okay well that's about that i need to clear out some dirt anyway so all right well i'll go get a drink and we'll see you back here in the hole 